Hi lovelies, it's me coming back to you with another video, and this is actually a tag video. It's the 2017 My Child Has Autism tag. It's also a collab video that I'm doing with another YouTuber who has autistic children. Her YouTube is The Baby Bunch, and she also has a very insightful blog called Living With Autism. Both I will link below in the description box. So we have created these questions because a parent of a child with autism, you really feel at a loss unless you have dealt with this in your life in some kind of way. So these are definitely questions that I felt I would ask a parent, like if I meet a parent, if we develop a relationship and what happened, and she also included questions that she felt should be asked for whatever reason. So I will begin. Who noticed the signs of your child's autism? Well, I realized she wasn't meeting milestones and that's where my concern was. I really thought it was just a speech issue and that she just get a speech therapist. I had another family member um, have a speech therapist through their, their young years and never got an autism diagnosis. So I really was not attuned to the whole autism thing. What happened was, was we did the questionnaire at the pediatrician's office and it asked, are they doing this or if they're doing that? And if you answered no on so many of the questions, then they wanted your child to be tested for autism. So that's kind of how the word came up the first time. Was your pediatrician helpful? My Okay, so we've had a bunch of pediatricians for various reasons because I had various health insurances, but the main one who I was really jocking because she wasn't meeting her milestones wasn't helpful at all. Like, I wanted to leave a bad Yelp review, but I just didn't have the time or didn't feel she was worth the effort. But she just poo-pooed me and brushed me off like I was just insane. Now, our new pediatrician is so helpful, so aware, so down to earth, and I love her to pieces. But the, the one before this, she wasn't helpful at all. She was like, you can call early intervention if you want to. Like, calling was not necessary. Who made the actual diagnosis? It's so funny because when I read blogs and stuff, I see different types of doctors, like neurologists and psycho this and that making the diagnosis whereas we had a developmental pediatrician which we still go see every six months but she was the one who ultimately made the diagnosis it, it kind of took me aback because she made the diagnosis within 20 minutes which i wasn't really feeling i mean um but that's another story how did you take the confirmed diagnosis I did not take it well at all. I broke down. I cried a lot. I mean, I I cried, but I didn't stand still in the sense that I was crying and tearing and not accepting for a long time, but I was also um, getting things together, like doing the next right step. I didn't just wait until I sucked it up and accepted it. I did everything I needed to do, but it was so hard to accept and I just wanted someone to tell me that they were wrong. So I would probe questions to people for somebody to tell me they were wrong and I did have those people and they were probably just being nice and I wasn't believing the writing on the wall, but I did not take it well. So if you had a spouse, were you on the same page of handling your new child with autism? I didn't have a spouse, but one of my my daughter's main caregivers is my mom and she wasn't really accepting either she was really poo-pooing that they were being dramatic and that you know there's nothing wrong and blah 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 so no the person the other person major person in Ava's life was not on board at all it took her a while she's on board now but I don't have a spouse so I really didn't have to deal with those issues does your child have sensory issues and how do you deal with them? She does. Um, textures of food, she only wants to deal with soft food and food she really doesn't have to chew. And also, I guess it all goes hand in hand, mouthing. She mouths a lot of things. So the way we deal with that is chewy things, like things that are acceptable to chew. There's a lot of parents 
of autistic children that had or autistic people I guess who created companies to start selling these things to help with the sensory issues your child has like you know like one is a weighted blanket you can use that for various things but her thing is chewing and um, having something in her mouth so we have a chewy necklace we have a chewy bracelet and the OT from early intervention I really love this woman she would buy a lot of stuff and let you try it out before you spent your money which was so good because you tend to want to find something so you tend to spend a lot of money on various things that do not work so since she dealt with a lot of children it made sense that she would buy these things you know she'd give them to us it's not like you would have to give it back she'd buy a bunch of them in bulk because it was cheaper to buy the stuff in bulk and she would try them with various children and that's definitely how we found various things that work for Ava do you have a network of autistic parents I have one other autist parent of an autistic child as my friend and over I think we've known each other for a couple of months actually meeting in person we do a lot of play dates we go to a lot of autistic events in the Boston area or even suburbs of Boston together um, we keep each other informed I'm trying to get Ava in her daughter's preschool we both have girls which is something I really wanted you know they say it hits boys more I don't know about the statistics but I really wanted to meet another mother who had an autistic girl and she does and we very much vibe and we very much talk each other off the ledge and sometimes you have to be talked off the ledge of not being a bad parent like you just feel like a bad freaking parent because I did this or I did that and she is definitely great for making me feel better and I hope I do the same for her did your child talk so did your child talk if so when how do you communicate okay Ava does not talk she has receptive language but don't have expressive language so she understands and she does pretty much what she's told for what a two-year-old can do but she does not talk we still have yet to hear a first word we have started the PEC system and that's kind of the picture system to communicate which she is doing very well they say she is doing excellent at it and I do practice it when they're not around and the latest thing was her tablet was broke because she dropped it in the toilet right so she drops the tablet in the toilet and I have a two-year warranty on it no questions asked Kendall so I send it back and we've been in the process of waiting for it for a week well the ABA therapist had a picture of the Kendall in her book and she's done handed her this picture like four or five times because she wants her tablet back so she can communicate I do keep hopes that the communication will burst and she will start talking her ass off soon but you know I have to really take that a day at a time and that is the, the definition of a parent with autism to me you really have to um, reevaluate your expectations and what you feel should happen or you don't know what will happen because the first thing everybody says is I don't know I don't know I don't know will she talk I don't know I don't know I don't know will she catch up to her peers I don't know I don't know I don't know and I just stay faithed up you know I have the faith that she will talk and then she will catch up to her peers do you feel the vaccines was the cause of her autism well I have to say I don't know uh, my one autistic mother she said she held back the vaccine she did a delayed vaccination and her daughter still autistic I don't know I still wish because I still hold in the back of my mind that I could have did something to prevent this that I should have did a delayed vaccination but I mean I can't take it back there's nothing I can do at this point so I, I really resign myself that hindsight's 2020 and if I had another child I would definitely delay vaccinations I wouldn't necessarily not do vaccinations because I am scared of my child contracting a disease that's pretty much been eradicated but I would delay them okay so once you get the diagnosis how much time did you spend on the internet researching okay I still am on the internet researching and I spent 
I'd have to say hundreds and hundreds of hours looking at this, looking at that, looking at Temple Grandin, you know, the most famous person with autism speeches. And I just wanted some hope and some this and that. I don't know, but you, when you meet one person with autism, literally you meet one person with autism. So there's no child like your child, which can be infuriating because you can't compare. You know, so I spent an incessant amount of time on the internet, and I actually still do. I watch YouTube videos, hence how I found this this um, this um woman I'm collabing with. Her video came up in my feed because that's as much time as I spend looking at videos and, you know, looking for anything to help me have a teaching moment to help Ava in any way possible. So I can't really quantify the question and that was actually my question. Has family and friends been um, helpful or harmful for your child's diagnosis? I have to say, I didn't openly share this diagnosis with a bunch of family. I did with my close friends. I have friends that I don't censor anything to because they're really like sisters to me. So my friends were definitely helpful and they, you know just because they're kind of like me and their personality I definitely didn't share with family because I felt if you're not really part of this child's life why do you need to know these things but a few people did say and I hate this so and so celebrity has child has autism like that's supposed to translate to my child you know I am not a celebrity with endless amounts of funds and endless amounts of this and a speech therapist that can be here all week and all this and that so it's really not fair to compare my situation to a celebrity because a celebrity has an endless amount of resources that I do not have but I do have a close member of my family with a child with autism that was um, diagnosed pretty young. And then I also have a friend who has a child and I went to high school, well I've known her since third grade and her child got diagnosed very late. So I definitely can talk to them and they've definitely grounded me and we can have conversations like on the same page. One with more experience is more of a teaching moment and the other one we're kind of on the same page because our kids got diagnosed around the same time or not too far apart. What's the hardest thing to deal with because your child has autism? Um, the hardest thing for me to deal with is things that actually haven't happened yet. You know, the worry about her future or the worry about her challenges. Um, right now, she is a pretty easygoing child and she does what she does and she seems really no different from any other child. She doesn't really have the behavioral meltdowns and things like that because she has her own issues, but they are not the standard, like, as I said, you meet a child with autism, you meet one child with autism, so she has her own bag of tricks, but it's the worry of the parental worry of your child's future. Like, that, to me, is the hardest thing, um to do with because no one can predict the future right I can't predict what's gonna happen five years from now she could be a genius I have no freaking idea or she could need more assistance or more help in school or whatever so that to me is the hardest thing what do I love the most about my autistic child I just love her you know I love everything about her I love her smile I love her hugs I love that she likes to cuddle and my child is a character and she's always busy and she's always doing a lot of things so I just love my child I beg God to give me this child and I love everything about her now I had to ask for information on this question because I was a little confused but now I see the point do you consider your child an autistic child or a child with autism and do you think by seeing autistic child or person defines who they are as a person? So there is definitely a big divide between autistic people and parents of autistic children, right? So I, you know, because at first I didn't understand the difference. So I guess the people, autistic people that feel this is who they are, they don't want to change it. And, you know, they don't want to be fixed.
you have an autistic child, we're kind of saying that we want to fix our child. And they get very upset about this. But I'm sorry, I can't, I'm not an autistic adult. So it's hard for me to relate. I am a black woman. I can teach my child how to be a black woman. But it's you, to me, and I'm sorry if I'm offending anybody, it is usually the very high functioning autistic people that are very offended you know it's not the parents that have to deal with a situation of a very low functioning autistic child and the thing is we're parents parents want your child to have an easy life they want them to not have challenges you want these things and i'll tell you i dated a guy who was deaf he had been deaf since he was three and he told me he didn't want his hearing back right but i'm sure at three when his he lost his hearing his mother wanted his hearing back his mother wanted him to hear her voice his mother wanted him not to have to go through the difficulties he went through life being a, a deaf adult a deaf child and stuff like that so you really have to separate how parents feel about this opposed to how autistic adults feel about this i have a child with autism would i rather she didn't have autism hell yeah i'm sorry i would be i'd rather she didn't have challenges i would rather she'd be talking to me right now i would rather not be excessively worried about her future so i have to say right now i'm in the i have an autistic child you know and i do respect other people's opinions that are different from mine but presently that's just my opinion also, during your research, have you come across misinformation about autism and how do you approach the person giving out this information? So I know I said this 10 times, but if you meet one person with autism, you've met one person with autism. So that person who's met one person with autism seems to know every freaking thing about autism and can tell you everything about your kid and what your kid should be doing and stuff like that. And I'm sitting there like, you're not walking in my shoes. You don't know my situation. And this was kind of someone on the phone I kind of snapped at because I am living with a child with autism and I've been researching and talking to therapists and, and doctors in my forum of other autistic parents online and trying to meet autistic parents and going to autistic events. Just because your cousin, sister's brother's niece has autism and you met them once does not give you a PhD on freaking autism. We can't even really have an intelligent conversation. So this situation kind of made me upset. But to be honest, I would just ignore it depending how deep it was. You know, I really like the hopeful things like, oh, you know, a lot of people, the few people that I do know, they do say, well, I've seen this um, newscast or, you know, a lot of kids with autism do very well. Like, Bill Gates, like, I like comments like that. But the weird, like, they're telling you what to do with your kid and you're not really walking this walk. Um... Yeah, I would just ignore, um, in that situation where I cussed her out, that was because she was, like, really pushing my buttons that she knew something she knew nothing about. So, <laughs> that's my thing with it. Okay, so, for whoever wants to answer the, you know, do this tag video themselves, I will put the tag questions in the description box. And the last thing is for you to create your own question for your, the tag. What would you like other parents to answer? Like, comment, subscribe, holla back.